Bad facts in Portland's homeless crisis. No one knows really how many people are living on the city streets. You see, the count of the homeless population that's supposed to happen every other year was canceled because of this pandemic. In our special series of reports asking, is Portland over? Our investigator Dan Tilkin showed you the problem Tuesday through the eyes of a Portland neighborhood pleading for help from the city to deal with a homeless camp and making very little progress. Let's get to Dan now, joining us live in studio. Dan, this time you're giving us another perspective on the issue. That's with a man who actually lives in this camp. Yes, the camp we're talking about is uh, along I-5 uh, in North Lumbar right here, one of just many, uh, many homeless camps across the city near freeways. Neighbors have spent months trying to get the city to combat trash, crime, and drugs at their doorstep, only to have the city only partially clean it up. Their frustration is entirely valid. The perspective of the man living in the camp is also valuable to hear. When we visited the neighborhood in October, one of the people helping a private organization clean up the trash and needles is this man. He didn't want to share his identity or anything about his personal life other than he's originally from Texas, but he was willing to share his insights. We cleaned this area up over here twice in three weeks. He's frustrated younger homeless people in the camp keep bringing in more stuff and doesn't understand why the city allows it and why it doesn't at least provide them with garbage cans. Portland don't want to keep picking it up, picking it up, picking it up. The city made a decision during the pandemic to leave many homeless camps alone and it also decided to try to do a better job helping people in camps get social services, which takes more time and money. Not enough mental health services? Not, that's for them. You know, I mean, not me. I've seen people get run over right out there. Bunch of people. Man. It's ridiculous. And then there's the drug use. Holy macaroni. I ain't never in my life seen such a bad deal. They're giving them the money to go buy the dope. They're, I mean, make them work for it. If anything, you know what I mean? Come on, man. They can do something besides. Give them money and do this and do that and get stupid, throw trash everywhere. He's talking about government financial assistance that some in the camps spend on drugs. That government assistance is supposed to go to living expenses. Does the city need to provide more housing? But who can afford $1,500 a month for a box? That's sad. It doesn't coincide their Social Security or, or whatever they're getting, you know. For help. According to a Home for Everyone and data from Multifamily Northwest, since early 2015 alone, rents in our community have risen much faster than the median income to nearly $1,400 a month for a one bedroom apartment in Portland. Meanwhile, more than 21,000 people in Multnomah County rely on federal disability checks that top out at $794 a month. The man was working alongside Terrence Moses, who runs Neighbors Helping Neighbors. Through donations to his nonprofit, Terrence cleans up camps and tries to help people living on the fringe. What you should really know is that a lot of our houseless neighbors aren't here by choice. And yes, there's a segment of them that are here by choice. And the stigma of um, dehumanizing them, the, what, they, what other folks don't know about it is, is that it is very hurtful and traumatizing to an already traumatic incident. We could never build enough brick and mortar buildings in time in a in a such urgency like this. But what we do need is more tiny homes or just land and let them pitch their tents or put their RVs, but still provide them the services. But where are you supposed to live? While this man didn't want to share with us how he ended up in this camp, he did say the city is enabling the crisis he's part of. You think Portland's too tolerant? They're giving up too easy. The political people are just giving up. They don't, they don't, they don't care to deal with it. They don't want to deal with it. And they're not going to deal with it. They're going to pass the buck to somebody else. It's a little bit easier. We did try speaking with other people in the camp, but he was the only one willing. You know, we have done a lot of stories about the crime and theft associated with homeless camps. I also talked to Terrence Moses about why so many people in the camp seem to hoard so much garbage. He said, when you're homeless and when you have absolutely nothing, everything you touch becomes a prized possession and they want to hold on 
to everything. Mm. Right, so it's not, it may look like garbage to all of us, but not to them, it's something important. You also touched on this, Dan, it's really important, but we've talked about this a lot, and that's the need to get people into housing as soon as possible. Right, micro shelters is talked about a lot. We've talked to developers and people who say, you cannot build apartment buildings fast enough to get out of this housing crisis. So then you talk about micro shelters and getting those up and running. But as we've reported on a lot here, there's a lot of disagreement in the county and the city and nonprofits about how to build those micro shelters quickly and how many to do and we're stuck without hardly any at all.